The one thing we all want is extended battery life for our cameras. If you remember a while back, I did an overheating test where I showed how a pretty setup GoPro Hero 10, GoPro Hero 11, and GoPro Hero 12 would actually overheat and shut down at 5K 30 frames per second if they were set up improperly. Whereas when the cameras were set up properly, with the Hero 10 and 11, I managed to record for one hour, 24 minutes before they shut down. With the Hero 12, I managed to record for one hour, 31 minutes before it shut down due to low battery. And remember, that was a 5K 30 frames per second. But it got me wondering if there was a battery solution out there that would make the cameras last even longer. Well, I think I managed to find one and it's by Fitstill and we're gonna review it today. So sit back, relax and enjoy because this is Demon View. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. I do appreciate you tuning in. And in this video, we're gonna be unboxing the uh, Fitstill battery pack and we're gonna to look to see how it performed with the GoPro Hero 12. We're gonna look at what's good about this battery pack and what's kind of not so good. So with that, let's get on with the unboxing. Okay, so time to see what's in this Fitstill box. Now, it's got a slightly magnetic little flap here on the bottom. You can see that, so that's quite interesting. Now, as you can see, it says for the GoPro Hero 9 and 10, and on the Amazon site, it's advertised as for the GoPro Hero 10 only. We'll get to that in a moment, but let's take a look at what's inside. So the first thing you have is one of these uh, quick release buckles, which, uh, you know, it's a standard kind of plasticky buckle that you get. Nothing too fascinating about that. You do get a thumb screw that's got these kind of larger edges on them and it's a bit longer, so it doesn't hit off the uh, bottom of the case. Kind of handy, but uh, it might not work with all your other GoPro cases just because of these two bits here. They sometimes tend to hit off cases. so. I'd use this only with the uh, fit still. And then you have the USB-C cable for charging. The unit itself is then inside this little plastic baggie. And here we go, the uh, fit still battery, well, extended battery. And this comes in a frame similar to what the uh, GoPro Hero 5, 6, and 7 came in before there was an actual integrated mounting fingers on the camera. So it's got some uh, fingers here on the bottom. The frame itself then opens up and this is the extended battery pack itself. Now, as you can see, it's got some uh, power stuff down the bottom here. It tells you that the input and the output is five volt, two amp for the GoPro Hero 9 and 10. Now, personally, I'm thinking that's because the 11 and 12 probably weren't out when this was designed. And if you press this button here, these blue lights light up to tell you what your power levels are. Four blue lights, of course, meaning we're at 100% power. So how does all this fit into the GoPro Hero? Well, I'm actually gonna demonstrate with the Hero 12 because it's the latest camera and that's what I did my battery test on when I ran this camera. So I'm gonna show you how it fits in right now. So as you can see, I have the GoPro Hero 12. It's not the GoPro Hero 11, I assure you. I'm gonna take off the side door here, like so, and I'm gonna remove the Enduro battery just like this. Then what we do is we just make sure that everything's nice and lined up there. You can see your fit still battery pack here and this acts more like a guide. You can actually just put it in there. So even if you wiggle it about that, this kind of like battery here acts as a guide. And what's happening here is this USB-C output socket here is plugging into the USB-C port of the camera and that's actually what powers it. As we slot it in, you can see the four lights light up in the back here. You'll get a little red flash from the camera, meaning that power is transferred. We will turn it on like so. And as you can see, camera is working. Now, because it's not an official GoPro accessory, it's gonna tell you that there is no battery because this isn't a smart battery. There's no communication between this battery and the camera. So these lights are really the only indicator you have of how much power is left in here. But how did this fare? Did it record for a long enough time? Well, let's take a look. So here's the thing. I set this GoPro Hero 12 up with the exact same settings I'd used on my previous battery test. So 5.3K, 30 frames per second. I had turned hyper smooth off because as you can see, the camera is mounted on a tripod. There is absolutely no reason to have hyper smooth on. That's just gonna give you actually lower quality footage since it has to crop into that 5.3K. So hyper smooth off screen set to 10% brightness and to power off after one minute. In fact, the only thing I had really going on this was that 
LED flashing light. I usually have those turned off, but in this case, since it was an extended battery test and I really wanted to get away from the computer for that, I left the LED on and flashing just to let you know that the camera was recording. So how long did this last? Well, this is where it gets interesting. Using those exact settings on this camera, I set it to record and it lasted for nearly three hours using this Fitstill battery pack. I mean, I, for 5.3K, 30 frames per second, and for no overheating whatsoever, I couldn't believe this lasted as long as it did. I really wasn't expecting that great a performance from a third party battery manufacturer. Usually when you see a battery on sale for like, you know, the $40 mark, and this was $39.99 when I bought it, you really don't expect that well a performance of it, considering that the Enduro batteries cost slightly more than that. That's if you don't have a discount. So for an extended battery pack to last for three hours and 5.3K, 35, 30 frames per second, that's just amazing. I really am impressed by the performance. So is this a recommended buy for everyone? Well, there are a few caveats to this and let me demonstrate number one with the GoPro Hero 12. As you can see, it's turned on and recording, but the back screen is not working with this. In fact, it will just do this kind of like flashy thing. If I hit the mode button there, it'll flash. And I suspect it's just not providing enough power to probably, you know, activate that rear screen properly. And um, let's see if I turn the camera off, turn it back on again, will it work? And yeah, the rear screen is working now. Will it stay working? Who knows? But as you can see, there are a slight few issues with using it with the Hero 12. But like I said, I record it with this, no problem. But then we do have another issue. Like I said, this is not a smart battery, so there's no communication between the battery and the camera. And that's a slight problem because when the battery actually runs out, usually with the Enduro battery or the, your standard battery, because there's communication between the battery and the camera, it says, hey, I'm just about out of juice, so shut down. And in which case the camera will stop recording, it will close out the file properly, no problem. With this, however, because there's no communication, the camera just suddenly ran out of juice like that, which means the file wasn't shut down properly, which means the minute you turned it on, you have that file repairing message. And as for those of you who may have had cameras for quite a while, seeing that file repairing message isn't always a good deal because that can mean sometimes your SD card can become corrupt from power interruptions like that. Then we have the frame itself. Now, as you know, I like to mount my cameras on the outside of my airplane on the aircraft wing using FAA compliant mounts. Well and good. However, I don't know if I trust this frame. I mean, ugh. for me, it seems to be made of like fairly cheap, flimsy plastic. It feels very lightweight. I'm pretty sure I could snap those fingers if I tried fast enough, hard enough. And although I do like the edge of this buckle here, as you can see, it's a nice big wide and like part that's holding the frame together, that might seem great, but you have to remember the frame is only as strong as its weakest part. And the weakest part here is gonna be these two tiny pieces of plastic that are actually holding this whole mechanism together. These two tiny pieces of plastic could easily snap. I'm pretty sure if I just pinch this, yeah, that's just coming right out of there already and will slip off. So that's not fantastic. I would have preferred to see a much sturdier locking mechanism than that. And fit still, if you are watching this video, um, you know, I would gladly pay 20 or $30 more to have an aluminum frame, which a much, much stronger locking mechanism, you know, aluminum fingers on it. I would like that. It would make me feel more secure. I would actually use that on the outside of my airplane. However, it does come with this nice cold shoe adapter on the side of it, which means you can, you know, attach a cold shoe to it or any type of device that uses a cold shoe. You know, you could have probably put one on the other side, even one on the top, if you'd improved that locking mechanism. So yeah, not honestly too happy about that. But still, if you have this indoors and it's mounted on a tripod, I think that's an absolutely fantastic device for you to use. It's gonna last, it's gonna give you the power. If you have it mounted inside the car or inside of an airplane, well, there you go. You don't have to start and stop your cameras. You can leave it recording. And a 5.3K, 30 frames per second, this didn't overheat. And I was actually surprised at that because of its design, I was expecting it to allow me to demonstrate once more. So let's just take this apart here. And as you can see, it's got this uh, like a battery blank in it. Now you might think, okay, so it's got some contacts here. It's obviously powering the camera. 
No, it's not. This here is what's powering your camera. It's just, it's plugging into your USB-C port on the camera itself to provide power. So I don't think there's any need for this. And because this is sitting inside your camera, it's absorbing all the heat that your camera generates. And I was actually afraid that, you know, maybe if I did have hyper smooth active or something like this, this could actually be kind of like a heat storage and could result in overheating. So I was actually surprised this actually ran at 5.3K, three frames per second without any overheating. I'm not sure that this part is necessary. They could have probably made this just a bit bigger, but it does help. I mean, it does help, like I said, it acts as a guide for your camera here and make sure that that USB-C port lines up properly. Now, what gets me is that the advertisement itself on Amazon, it did actually say for the Hero 10 only and the box itself, as you may remember from the unboxing part, says for the Hero 9 and 10. Now, like I said, that's possibly due to the fact that the 11 and 12 weren't around at the time. But let's take a quick look at something interesting here, if you will. I'm going to take the uh, battery and door off of the Hero 11. And take the Enduro battery out. Put it in. And as you can see, the blue lights light up. Uh, just power this fella on. And there we go. The Hero 11, absolutely no problem. It seems to be working with this too. I didn't do a battery test with the Hero 11. Didn't see the point. Uh, if it works with the Hero 12, going to work with the Hero 11. And I expected somewhat similar run times due, you know, based on my previous battery tests. Now, let's take a look at the Hero 10, which remember the advertisement said for Hero 10 only. Well, let's put it in again. Okay, we're in. The lights light up. Uh, not seeing a red flash here. In fact, when I hold the power button, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Even though this is advertised for Hero 10 only, the one camera out of the 10, 11, and 12 that it didn't work with was the Hero 10. Uh, this does absolutely nothing. And be assured, on all my GoPros, I have the GoPro Hero Labs firmware installed on this with the power checking bypass activated. So this will work on external power supplies. I won't get that not enough power message or anything like that. But for some reason, this just doesn't work on the Hero 10, which is bizarre because, like I said, it was advertised for the Hero 10 only. Written on the box is for the GoPro Hero 9 and 10, and yet it just doesn't work with the 10. So that's a bad point against it. But like I said, works with the Hero 11 and works with the Hero 12. No problem. However, one more thing is if you're using this, you know, in your airplane or in your car and you wanted to have external audio, well, obviously, your media mod is not going to fit on this because it's got this big battery pack to it. And if you have a GoPro mic adapter, there's no place to plug it in because there's only one USB-C port for charging. That's on the inside and your camera's USB-C port has been taken up with the power out. So you can't use external audio if you're using this battery pack with a Hero 10 or 11 or 12. Well, probably not the Hero 10 since it doesn't work. Now, don't forget the Hero 12 does support Bluetooth audio, so you do have that as an option, but I don't know how great an option that is. Otherwise, you're dependent pretty much on the camera mics. So, yeah, interesting. It does exactly what it says in the tin while restricting you from doing things that you normally would. So it all comes down to the final verdict. Would I actually purchase another one of these for myself? And, hmm, for my use, possibly not. If I'm going to use uh, like an extended time lapse or something, yeah, absolutely. I think I would definitely actually use this. But like I said, it lasted four hours. I'm not sure how long it would last on time lapse mode, and that's without using the extended time lapse option, courtesy of the GoPro Labs. Also, you have to remember using extended time lapse, it actually powers off the camera and then powers it back on. Whereas this might actually time out. Let's see, all the lights are gone off. Yeah, it won't power back on because it timed out. You have to press the blue light for it to come back on. So for extended time lapse, if you're doing a time lapse video, yeah, sure, it's going to last longer than the regular Enduro battery. It's not going to last as long as a larger external battery pack. And using the extended time lapse mode where your camera actually powers on and off, it's not going to last at all because once your camera stays off for probably like 30 seconds or so, this is not going to turn back on. However, if you're going on a longer car journey, or if you do use the camera mics or even separate audio mics, and you want the camera set up on a tripod indoors, and you want something that shoots for over an hour, two hours, maybe you're doing a DJ set at a nightclub. 
yeah, yeah, I would recommend this. It does exactly what it says in the tin. It really does supply more power than the GoPro Enduro battery. Now, what's not known is if it has similar chemistry to the Enduro battery. I doubt it. This may not perform well in cold weather. It's not really cold enough here, and I don't feel like throwing this in the freezer at the moment to find out. So that's kind of up to you to find out. Um, for me, oh, it's really hard to say. When I film with my camera, I do tend to have the media mod attached to it and use external microphones, but not all the time. Uh, sometimes if there's like a thunderstorm out or something, I might want to kind of like leave this outside and I want more power than you know, just the regular Enduro battery. Which brings up another point. I don't think this is waterproof. There's no sign of an actual seal here. And it might not be waterproof or weatherproof. I really doubt it's waterproof, but I kind of also doubt that it's weatherproof. I'm not seeing any type of rubber gaskets or seals. So it's it's a bit of a hard one to recommend. If, this is, there's a lot of ifs here. If you don't require external audio, if you don't require waterproofing, if you don't require anything over three hours of battery, then yeah, absolutely, I recommend it. Sure, go and buy it. Like I said, there's a lot of ifs associated with this. So, you know, it's a very hard battery pack to recommend. If you're looking for more power for your camera, something that's longer lasting, then absolutely go ahead, purchase it. It's available on Amazon right now for $39.99. Um, yeah, I'm going to get some use out of it, but I'm not going to, you know, be performing long night lapses over three or four hours for that. I'll always use a plug-in external supply or a larger battery pack. But if you're out and about with your camera and you want something that's going to last, you don't want the hassle of like changing battery, then yeah, sure. I do recommend this. It is well worth the purchase and uh, yeah, give it a go. See if it actually suits your needs. So with that in mind, uh, Hopefully you liked the video and hopefully it contained some useful information for you. And until next time, cheerio.